Hey guys, Marco here. Today we're going to be uh, covering a question that I get often uh, and that is typically what kind of gear I shoot with and uh, you know as they call it in the YouTube world, what's in my bag? So let's get into the video. So for starters, I'm going to cover what bag I'm currently using and uh, I think this bag is uh, often overlooked but it's actually really comfortable and it fits a lot of the stuff that I work with. Um, I think uh, that it is extremely overpriced because I don't think you can just buy this bag. I might be wrong. Uh, I think you only get the bag if you buy the strobes and that is the uh, Pro Photo bag that you get when you purchase the B2 or the B10 Duo kit. Uh, they'll throw in this bag. So Pro Photo, um, I I'm not sure I think you are not able to just buy that bag I might be wrong though uh, but it is a really comfortable bag it's really good on the shoulders and it carries all my gear and on the front side of things it does carry my laptop and it's padded and it's got everything that I need so it's a great travel bag too uh, it fits really comfortable with the carry-on um, and it's it, it doesn't you know it doesn't look like a camera bag outside of the fact that it says pro photo um, but um, again, this is a really comfortable, comfortable bag. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go through this bag and open it up, and let's just kind of start pulling things out as I uh, as I see them. So um, we'll start with the main stuff, which is primarily what most of you guys want to know: uh, what lenses I shoot with and what camera I'm shooting with. So I'll start with the camera. Um, my camera of choice right now it is the Canon R5. Uh, this can't this camera is just fantastic it meets all of my requirements including video so I know there's a lot of talks out there about the camera overheating but for me the way I use it and some of the clips that I'm creating uh, this camera gets the job done and then some um, I do have it in a small rig cage and it's actually very comfortable it protects the camera but more importantly um, what I'm able to do is I'm able to quickly snap on an external recorder I use the Ninja 5 and I'm, I'm quickly able to plug that in and just snap it plug the cable and I'm ready to go so this is actually uh, this cage actually stays on my camera um, and it's easy to work with it, it doesn't really get in the way it just uh, it just you know they did a really good job with it uh, another cool thing about it is of course you can kind of bolt in a bunch of other things to the camera I don't really do that but you certainly can you can actually rig this whole thing if you wanted to for me this is actually more so to protect the camera and also for me to be able to quick quickly snap on that external recorder if I wanted to um, I'm not a big fan of connecting things to the hot shoe that wouldn't be maybe a trigger or a flash um, I know that there's a mount that you can use to put that external recorder but I'm not a big fan of that just because that's really heavy once you start adding battery to it and all of that stuff you know anything you bump that against is just gonna mess up your hot shoe so I, I prefer just buying the um, the, the case for it yes it's more money but when you think about you know the cost of repairing the hot shoe it pretty much washes out so anyway camera of choice is the Canon R5 um, hopping on to uh, my lenses so currently I only use two lenses uh, and that's it I find that these two lenses more than meet my requirements and I'm able to do just about all of my work if not all of my work with these two lenses um, I think if I needed another lens I would probably just rent it at that point um, I don't think that I would be able to justify for the most part the RF lenses they're up in the you know $2,500 range I don't think I would be able to justify spending that lens on that lens for just personal use when I can very well get all my work done so I'll start with the one I use the least but it's actually a favorite and then I'll move on to the one I use the most which is also a favorite um, so the one I actually lose, use the least is the almighty uh, Canon L 100 millimeter macro um, I used to have an 85 but I've now replaced it with this lens and the reason is because this lens is tack sharp I mean sharp and some of the images uh, that I created with this, I've just been mind blown by. Um, the important thing is that it's also a macro. So if you wanna get those beauty shots, really nice, tight, close portraits, <clears throat> this is gonna be your guy. 
Um, I mean, you can get really, really cl uh, close with this guy. And also at 100 millimeters, uh, it becomes a really good focal range for portraits. So yes, it's a 2.8, but guess what? I don't shoot 2.8. So um, because of that, I think this lens um, it more than meets my requirements. Now for this particular lens, uh, for the most part I'm using it at about f4 or so and uh, what I'll do is I'll put some of the images in one of these sides here so you guys can take a look at what that looks like. But this is uh, one of uh, my favorite lenses. It stays in my bag all the time because if anything, if worse comes to worse, I could actually do everything with this lens. I can get my tight shots and then I can get those nice portrait shots that I'm, you know, very fond of. Um, so yeah, this is the 100 millimeter f2.8 uh, EF mount, by the way. So I do have an adapter for it, uh, but this is an EF mount lens that I use uh, for the majority of my beauty work. So whenever you see those tight up close shots, this is the lens that I'm using. And I do carry the adapter for it. The other lens that I uh, just picked up and it's literally replaced three, maybe four lenses. Um, I can't say enough about this lens. This lens, yes, is extremely expensive. It is extremely heavy. Um, there's a lot of talk about it on the internet. Um, when I was looking for a filter, couldn't find one, uh, just because of how big this lens is. But when you compare it to not having to carry three other prime lenses, I think this lens just pretty much wins. If you do your research on the internet, anyone that's, uh, that owns this lens will tell you the same. It is a beast, it's a monster, it's heavy, um, but you only have to carry one lens. And for me, that speaks in volumes. And that lens for me is the 2870 from Canon. And this is an F2 lens, it is gigantic. I think this lens might be three pounds. Um, and by the way, I keep a little bit of gaff tape and I'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. But um, yeah, so this is a three pound lens, F2 all the way through. So from 28, I can actually get, you know, wide angle at F2. I can get a 35 millimeter at F2. I can get that 50 at F2. And at 70 millimeters, I can get an F2 portrait out of this lens, which would look fantastic. For the most part, you know, nobody is gonna be able to tell if you shoot it at 85 or 70. I mean, maybe a photographer, but who cares, guys? All that matters is how you feel about your work. Um, this lens shoots 98% of my work right now. That's how heavily used this lens is. And again, it's replaced a 50 prime, uh, prime lens, the 85 that I used to carry, and uh, a 24 millimeter wide angle. This lens is doing everything for me at the moment. I can't speak n enough about this lens. So I'll talk briefly about why I put a little gaff tape in uh, on my lenses. And that's because um, I'm, for this lens, what I do sometimes is I'll, I'll set it at 50, 50 millimeters um, and then I'll just gaff tape it so it doesn't move. Um, the reason for that is because I'm trying to create consistency on my images. And that's just the way that I figured out, you know, the easy way for me to not start zooming in and out the other cool thing about it is you know when you're on set sometimes you need a piece of gaff, gaff tape and what better place to have it in your you know maybe in your lens caps or in your filters that you can just quickly rip out a piece of gaff tape and then use it to hold something or, or tie something down it's really easy to you know it doesn't it, it actually protects your lens to some degree but it doesn't get in the way for me and i found this to be very useful even from back in my production days so again back to the lens F2.8, uh, sorry, F2 Canon 28 millimeter, 2870 uh, millimeter. This is, as I call it, the beast. And guys, these are the only two lenses that I carry. That is it. I could do all of my work with either or, but this is a specialty lens. This guy does actual macro, and this guy does just beautiful, beautiful portraits uh, and wide angle portraits with this guy. So this is it. What are some of the other things I carry? Um, recently, I added this guy. And see here, I actually put gaff tape on this too. Um, this is actually, you know, as you, as you guys know, this is a speed light. And um, yeah, I could have gotten the Profoto, 
the pro photo speed light is about a thousand dollars and for the kind of use that i'm using it on the beach i just can't justify spending that kind of crazy money um but what uh what i do with this guy is actually i started putting it just kind of direct and um you'll be surprised by the kind of look um, maybe i do a tutorial if you want to see about how i use this guy on the beach on daylight um let me know i'll put together a tutorial for you guys but this guy is used for that direct light. Sometimes when there's an overcast too here in South Florida, it rains a lot. I'll use this guy just to give it that nice little punch uh, and glow that you know my work is usually known for. So um, this guy just picked it up. This little cup just kind of clicks on there and it just diffuses the light a little bit. So you, you can play around with this and just see what you like best. I think this is like $5. It's, it was worth the cost for me to have it just in case I needed it. Uh, but for the most part, I will just point this on top of my camera and fire it straight up to the model. And that's how I get my direct light sometimes. Sometimes there's an overcast or even when there's direct sun, right? Um, what I'll do is I'll put this guy just to fill in a little bit of that shadow so that the image doesn't, it's just not too much contrast, it's just not too much dark on one side. I'll use this guy as a heart, uh, as a filler. The other cool thing about it is of course, you can always get a trigger for it. And by having a trigger, I can have an assistant maybe put it up you know, uh, uh, on the darker side of wherever the sun's casting, just hold it up really close so that I can fire it remotely and then, you know, just have somebody really close to it so that it just uses that, that fill uh, that, that I like to put on, on, the model, um, on the model skin. So yeah, this is actually new to the kit and it just sits here and it lives right in my bag out of the way. Um, what else? I carry one of these guys because you're replacing lenses on the beach you, you just definitely want to be careful so I definitely carry one of these little air things I don't know what they're called but they're really useful um, and then the other thing I actually carry is a cloth so a wiping cloth for the gear so I'll just put that away <clears throat> another thing that I start adding and this is primarily for my educational channel and for you guys in YouTube um, this is actually something I learned from a couple other photographers so I'm not gonna take credit for this um, but um, I am now recording kind of behind the scenes at some of the content you guys are seeing. I want to give you guys an opportunity to see how it looks from my camera's point of view. Um, so I'll just kind of uh, screw this guy in here and this is a DJI Osmo Action. Um, so what you're seeing here is basically my point of view. And then here's a, a cool thing about the cage, right? I mentioned earlier, I, I I'm not mounting it on the hot shoe. Um, the, the actual cage has a hot shoe in it. So again, I'm, I'm protecting my camera's hot shoe to make sure that nothing happens to it. And this is actually pretty cool. It just kind of stays there as I'm shooting. If I shoot vertical, the, the, the camera uh, in, the, uh, in the GoPro will actually flip. So it's actually pretty cool to have this point of view. Um, for you guys, more importantly, uh, if you're trying to learn how I shoot, this is actually a, a, what I call a point of view camera. Um, inexpensive, waterproof. Um, and, and uh, you know, also another thing you can do is put this on a uh, tripod and just kind of put it in another point, in another location for a different point of view. So little DJI Osmo just stays in the bag all the time. Um, what else, what else, what else? Uh, carry extra batteries um, for the Canon R5. I actually carry three. There's one on the camera. So at any given time, I have four batteries. I can actually shoot an entire day because I have enough batteries to go with. Um, the other thing I actually do is actually carry this guy and this is a, a battery pack that I always carry. This is either for my phone or for uh, this camera that I use for BTS or the microphones or maybe I forgot to, to charge the, um, the GoPro. This guy will charge your phone and all of that, you know, probably in like less than 15 minutes or so. So this is a gigantic power pack. Um, but it actually serves a really good purpose. And then so what I've done is I have this little clip, this like tie rope clip, and then I can just kind of hang this and clip it somewhere um, and just leave it there. If, if maybe a client needs some juice, uh, I'll just be able to you know quickly provide it to them by having this on set. So um, it does work with USB, but USB-C as well. And so what I do is I actually carry the USB-C uh, charger lightning cable. Here, let me show you this. I carry the USB-C charging lightning cable from uh, for my iPhone and then this guy will charge your phone like in 
15 minutes. Um, one thing that, that I'll note is if you are doing that with people and letting them use it, um, just make sure that you know you say, hey, just plug it in, but leave it for, put it down for 15 minutes. Don't carry it or don't use your phone while you're charging it because you're, you're actually consuming more battery. So in an effort to give everyone a fair chance to charge their phones, just plug it in. You know, I'm sure you'll live without your phone for 15 minutes, but in 15 minutes, it'll be fully charged. Um, and then that way someone else can have a turn at it. But what I do is I typically will find a place, quickly hang that up, and then people can actually just use it and share. I'll just leave the cable hanging there. So pretty cool feature. Your clients will appreciate they have batteries. Um, what else, what else, what else? Oh, uh, this guy. I can't speak enough about this little cool product. Um, I think in my work, if you haven't noticed, color is key. Um, and one of, the, one of the ways I achieve that is by having a color checker. So um, this guy, what, what you do is you're gonna take a, a picture once you have everything set up and, and the model and the light and everything, you're gonna have your model kind of put this behind their chin and then just um, take a picture with it and what this guy's gonna do is when you're sitting back in post-production you know you have color accuracy you know what true red would look like you know what your pure white would look like you know what pure black is gonna look like so when you're doing uh, color work specifically for clients you know they spend a lot of money in research and development for their um, for their colors um, the last thing you want to do is you know not give them the right colors as represented by the brand um, you can actually lose clients for doing that so um, this little tool it's just a couple of bucks but it's gonna save you a ton of time trying to figure out maybe what the white balance was or even what the color the product was right so you know while you might remember it red it may be a different shade of red and knowing that you actually have true red here you know you can just color uh, balance your your image in according to this guy and then every other color will look accurate so this tool if you're shooting product and that's any kind of product whether it's a piece of clothing or an actual product um, this guy is going to save your butt when it comes to post-production this actually stays in my bag all the time another thing that i now carry and that's primarily because i do video as well is i actually carry uh, these filters and these are all free will free well filters um, <clears throat> that i carry and these are specifically this one specifically for the 2870 it is a massive filter um, which I, yeah, I wish it didn't, but the fact that I just love that lens so much and I'm actually able to do video with it at F2, um, I carry this filter. This is actually a six to nine stop filter and that's just because the conditions that I work in, it's always very bright. I'm always finding myself at that, you know, six plus um, stops of, of uh, 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 where I have to, you know, set that filter. So I actually don't own the smaller one, uh, which is the one to five. This is the one that I use. Um, the other filters I use free well are this guy, the smaller ones, and this is actually the full range. This is actually the one to five and then six to nine I actually have both. Uh, and that is for um, this lens. And what I do is I actually have an adapter that allows me to use it so I actually have filters for both my lenses <clears throat> very handy if you are getting into video and you're shooting outdoors I recommend free will filters these are magnetic they just quickly snap on and they actually come with a magnetic cap um, that you can use and it keeps your filter protected it protects your your lenses and actually it's a pretty cool bag that you can just kind of quickly just put in your in your backpack and it stays uh, another thing that I carry that oftentimes a lot of people overlook and probably this is one of the most important things that you should have in your bag is a little bag with ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, business cards. So I'm always, always, always when I'm on set, um, people always ask me, hey, um, how do I get a hold of you? How do I reach you? Yeah, you know, obviously Instagram is always there. Uh, I can give you my number, I can give you that. But you know, this guy just kind of steps up your game a little bit from a professional standpoint. It's nice to just whip out a card and say, here's here's all my info here, give me a call. Uh, let me know how I can be of service, right? So don't forget, you know, get a little pouch and, and put your, your, um, your business cards on um, in your bag. So uh, man, I, I think I just kind of emptied out this bag really quickly. 
Um, so as you can see, it's, it's not a lot of things that I do carry, but everything I carry is uh, uh, has a purpose in my bag. Um, here is another thing that a lot of guys often overlook. I buy these in a big box. They come, I think it's like 300 of these. And, and what this is, is just a lens wipe. So after I will uh, blow on the lens with that little guy, I will use this guy to quickly just clean it. It's also good for your sunglasses or anything else that you might need. So, you know, a little uh, lens wipe for, uh, for the beach. Oh, one more piece that I wanted to show you. And earlier I mentioned that I use a Ninja Five Recorder for my video. Um, this is the piece that kind of puts it all together. And, and if you remember, I mentioned about the, the cage always staying on my camera. The reason why is because they make this, uh, this plate or quick uh, release slider that I can just quickly slap onto the camera. And it's, again, it's not touching the hot shoe and I can just screw on the recorder in here and then I can move it as I need to and then the recorder just stays in the camera so it's actually pretty handy to you know once you have your recorder I can actually just quickly take it off pull the screw out and you're good to go um, so yeah I just wanted to show you that and guys what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll just kind of list all this stuff if you know if you find value in it and you think it might help you in any way just you know I'd, I'd appreciate using that affiliate link it certainly helps me, it helps the channel, and just kind of keeps this whole process moving forward. Um, other things that I do carry in here are cards. So I carry spare cards uh, for, the, for the Canon R5. I actually carry two. And then I actually carry a spare uh, SD card because I write to two cards at once. Um, I actually write uh, JPEGs to one and then um, uh, raw to the other. Uh, on the front end of the, of the card, oh, here's another thing that I carry and I'll show you guys really easily. So, um, one of the advantages of this bag, of course, I mentioned is that it has a front separate pocket uh, for, um, you know, for your laptop or whatever else. Um, well, so what I now started doing is I will either carry my iPad Pro in there because um, during the shoot, I can actually connect it to my laptop and we can go through the photos with, with the model and, and pick you know the favorites right there and then. We can just go through it. Um, the other thing, it's kind of like virtual tethering or uh, uh, online tethering, right? I will shoot it, it shows up to the, to the iPad Pro and then you can actually hand that off to your client. So what I do is I put the iPad Pro in like a life proof case and I can hand it off to my client while I'm shooting and they're actually looking at images as they're coming in from my camera via Wi-Fi, which is another reason why I actually carry three batteries. Because of course, if you're using Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, it's gonna drain your battery a little bit faster. But for the most part, for a two hour session or three hour session, um, I will go through maybe a battery, maybe two. Um, so I'm covered for a whole day by carrying four batteries. So that's actually a really cool feature. If you're interested in knowing about how I do that, I'll be more than happy to put together a video, just mention it down below. But again, what I do is I'll shoot and then that image gets referenced back on the iPad Pro and then my client is actually looking at images as they're coming in. Another cool thing is that they can actually uh, favorite them. So as they're coming in, they're actually able to see them, you know, the, maybe the stylist is able to see them and quickly make adjustments without having to be in front of the model or distracting the workflow. So it's actually a really cool feature uh, that enables me to just provide a better experience for my clients. But when I do test shoots, um, that's not something I do. Uh, I still carry the laptop. We're just gonna go over, not the laptop, I still carry the, uh, the iPad Pro. We're just gonna go over them after the shoot. Um, and after the shoot, typically I just pull out the iPad Pro and we'll just sit down, grab coffee or a drink or something. Just again, we worked in South Florida, so nine times out of 10 after a shoot, you've just been under the sun, you just kinda wanna relax. Um, I'll pull out the iPad Pro and we'll go through the images on the iPad Pro. However, what I do do, is I also carry a little pad. And in this pad, I carry uh, a motto release. Guys, I can't stress this enough how important it is for you to have a motto release for all your shoots. So what I do is I print out, you know, 25, 30, whatever I can fit in this clip, and I will put it in this clip and it actually stays in my bag all the time along with a pen. And the reason uh, why I don't do um, online, so like e-signature and anything like that, is because 
nothing beats paper on pen. Uh, anything else outside of that um, can be challenged in a court of law. So if you sign it, uh, what I do is I will have my model sign it. Um, part of the questions that are here is, you know, obviously I need to see your ID. And then after they sign it, I will have them hold their ID, hold the model release, and I'll take a picture with my iPhone. That stuff gets filed away along with this, this uh, model release. So that way, there's never any questions that they didn't sign it because they're actually, I have a picture of them holding it with their ID. Again, it's nothing ever ha bad has happened but uh, this is in an effort to make sure that it never does. Um, I, you know, I just don't like putting myself in situations where it's my word against someone else. You just gotta cover your grounds. So guys, that is pretty much it. Uh, the other thing I will note, sometimes carry in here is my tethering cable if I'm shooting in a place where it's tethered, but <clears throat> this is it. Two lenses, one camera, and a bunch of other little nicks and things that I use as part of to better enhance the experience for my customers, but also to be able to provide this content to you. If you have any questions, please hit me up. Happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, but until then, hope you're home, hope you're safe, and see you on the next one. Peace.